You are born a Sunni Muslim? Yes. You were born in the Netherlands? Yes. Okay. So what's your family background? Are they from the Middle East? What are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they are from Asia. They are from Pakistan. Pakistan, Asia. So Pakistan yeah. Okay. Well, okay. We're going to talk. We'll see by the power of the living God, the Father, Son, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we're going to see by the grace of Lord Jesus Christ if you know your religion. So do you practice your religion? Um, I would say so. Okay, so you you pray then five times a day. You try at least, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you said you're Sunni. So here it says you're Sunni Islam. So uh, the major contention between Christianity and Islam, the major con contention is your concept of God, Tawheed, and our concept of God, the Trinity, as well as <clears throat> our authority figures. You look to Muhammad, we look to Jesus Christ, as well as you believe the Quran, we believe the Bible, but you also follow the Sunnah. Yes, we, we follow the Sunnah, we follow the Quran. Um, and so you believe Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, right? Um, yeah, I believe I believe in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, but there are some weak hadiths um, in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. No, that's not true. I, I know you're thinking you're going to deceive me. No. Using. <coughs> do you have a gin in your throat that's uh, messing no, no, up? No, 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 you can uh, continue. Okay, maybe because you didn't, did you snort water in and out of your nose? No. There is nothing <laughs> weak in Bukhari. What it is is that in Bukhari, they're all Sahih, but some narrations are higher in the chain of Sahih than others. So they're all Sahih. That's why it's called Sahih. But some Hadiths are higher in the level of authenticity, but they're all authentic. So if I were to give you a grading, some Sahih narrations are 100%. Others are 90%, 93%, but they're still Sahih. But yeah, yeah, but I think you have, you have a misconception about hadith. No, I don't. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to see. He wants me to now disrespect this prophet because he's barking. See what he's doing now? I'm going to give you another chance, young man, because I'm going to now play Hamza Yusuf to show that you're a son of Satan. So are you going to listen now or are you going to start barking? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to listen to it. Okay. I'm going to listen. Don't let me play Hamza Yusuf to show that you're lying. You're doing taqiyah, which is not going to work with me. So now stop manifesting. The Lord Jesus rebuked the demon in you and teach you the fear of the Lord. Now, when you woke up this morning, did you snort water in and out of your nose? <clears throat> did I snort water in, in and out of your nose? Yes. Did you yeah, yeah, or it, it, did it piss in your ears? Yeah, yeah. So in wudu, yes, I did. Um... Did you do an in out of your nose? Yes. Three times, right? Yes. Okay, why did you do that? Um, because that's that's how you do wudu. No, because your prophet said Satan was in your nose. In yeah, that's, that's that's not that's metaphorical. You know, no, that's it not is. literal. No, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. That's not what the hadith says. Here, let me prove that you're a liar. Okay. You're a son of Satan because now you're trying to lie to me. That's why I'm going to okay, insult okay. you to lie. Okay, Stop okay, lying. Sure. That's not what he said. He didn't say it. He didn't say it's metaphorical. In fact, can you show me the hadith where he says it's metaphorical? Yeah, are you saying you're smarter than your prophet because he could have simply said that you are flushing out what's harmful in your nose? He said, "No, Satan is in your nose." So stop okay. lying to me, because now I'm going to read to you. Okay. The translator of Sahih Khulkhari, which my language means Sahih Al Krab, said. One second, let me show it to you. Okay. This is what he says. So don't try to lie to me, young man, because you're going to embarrass yourself. Okay, so here you go. Here's what the translator, who's a Sunni Salafi, says. So you lie to me, I'm going to embarrass you, young man. So stop lying. Be a man of integrity, which is hard because you're busy taking a piss because <clears throat> you want to make sure Satan got flushed out of your penis. We should believe that Satan actually stays in the upper part of one's nose, though we cannot perceive how, for this is related to the unseen world uh, of which we know nothing except what Allah tells us. So why did you lie to me and say it's metaphorical? Yeah, so I said it's metaphorical um, because first of all, there are many um, contemporary Islamic scholars which hold a view in- I don't care about contemporary. I'm okay, going but... to prophet. <laughs> yeah, but I, I go to scholars. I go to scholars. <laughs> No, here's the hadith. <laughs> yeah, but I go to scholars. I go to scholars. No, not all scholars agree. I just quoted you a scholar says your scholars are full of crap. 
narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, if, when, if any one of you rouses from sleep and performs the ablution, he should wash his nose by putting water in it and then blowing it out thrice because Satan has stayed in the upper part of his nose all the night. He didn't say it's metaphorical. So don't add the words to your prophet. Yeah, yeah. But I was explaining. Yeah. Some, uh, my view is um, where some scholars, which some scholars agree with. And some I go with that view. Right? Wait, wait, yeah, wait. yeah, but we, we can grant this. We can grant the view. So I don't care what your scholars say. I gave you your prophet. He said Satan's in your nose. Yeah, so we can grant this literal view. I have no problem with this. I wouldn't dispute this. So no you problem. believe Satan's in your nose and you flush them out? Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, but... Let me at least be honest. So since Satan's was in your nose, is he in the nose of all Muslims? Um, uh, so you all have to use I... your wudu, right? Or, or are you special? He only stays in your nose, on your prophet's nose. No, 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 no. I assume it's also in all Muslims. Okay, but... So he's in all Muslim noses. Okay, excellent. I just want to know that. So I'm glad you flushed them out today. All right. Now, uh, when you pray five times a day, do you know what tashahud is? As Asalamu alaikum. I don't know. Uh, so you mean Asalamu alaikum ra ra rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Where we say, you say, where we say peace and blessing upon uh, our Prophet? Or That's not what friends? you say. Are you uh, lying to me about to see? This is the, now this is the third time I'm catching <coughs> you in a lie. No, no. What do you say in tashahud exactly? Um, Asalamu alaikum, ayyuhan nabi. Ah, now sure. you told me the truth. See, now the genie who was uh, pricking your throat to lie. Whom you you pissed out in the toilet? Now he's leaving you alone. So what do you say when you pray five times a week, five times a day? Yes. Yeah, so, Assalamu alaikum, ayyuh nabiyyu rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Translate in English. I, I cannot speak Arabic. No, translate in English. Yeah, but I, how how should I do that if I can't? Oh, you don't know. No. Oh, so you're citing words you don't understand? Um. Well, um, I do know what the general meaning is, but okay, I cannot so translate word for word. Assalamu alaikum, ayyuh nabi mean. Yeah, so we're sending peace and blessings upon our prophet. That's I not assume. what it says. Translate it literally. Assalamu alaikum. What does that mean? Yeah, I, I said I cannot translate okay. it literally. But I know the meaning. Assalamu means peace be upon you, O prophet. Right? <coughs> I... Um, I would, yeah, we, I don't know if I'm not, I don't know because I cannot speak Arabic. So that's a so problem. You, you're telling me you guys are only illiterate like your prophet. You're praying prayers to your God that you don't know what it means. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> okay. Assalamu alaikum means peace be upon you, O prophet. Peace no, be upon you, alayka. You're talking to him directly. Okay. But could I respond? Yeah, can you respond why you're speaking? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So first of all, pray, praying to, to praying to a prophet is different than praying for a prophet. Praying, we don't have. No, no, you are praying, praying to him. You're speaking. No, no, no. We are praying for, for, for. No, you're speaking to, to him. Aleka means you're speaking to him. No, but we we want to, uh, God to send a blessing, so we're speaking to God but to you're send the blessings upon. Speaking upon to God. him. Let's try it a fourth time. You're speaking to him. Assalamu alaika. You're speaking to him. I believe I'm speaking to God, but maybe, maybe you're, uh, you're speaking to. Who? I believe I sp I'm speaking to God. No, but in that part, you're not speaking to God. You're not asking Allah. You're not saying Allah send peace upon the Prophet. You're saying Assalamu alaikum. You're talking to him and invoking peace from. It's like when I say to you, Assalamu alaikum. I'm speaking to you and invoking Allah to bless you. So you're speaking to him. Assalamu alaika. So why yeah. are you speaking to a dead man who is buried in Medina burning in hell? Can you explain that? To yeah, me? so I, I would say that it's it's hard for me because I cannot speak Arabic because it would be more convenient if I could speak Arabic so I could um so again uh, understand what you're I, I, I translating word for word. I want to repeat what you're telling everyone. You guys are a bunch of umiyun illiterates because you're praying a prayer in a language you don't understand and you don't even figure out that in this prayer you're speaking to a dead man that's what you're telling us right oh, but you're claiming we are speaking to a dead man yes but, you well, are how, 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 is the satan in your throat can you piss him out <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah sure assalamu alaika means peace be upon you you're speaking to a dead man okay but since again you don't know Arabic, so you're just following Muhammad to help. May God yeah, yeah. save you before it's too late. When your prophet kissed the black stone, because you believe in Tawheed, when he kissed the black stone, and he, he wept on it. And then Umar ibn al-Khattab, Umar ibn al-Khattab, 
when he went to kiss the black stone, he said, I know you are a stone that neither benefits nor harms anyone. Had I not seen the prophet kissing you, I would not have kissed you. So your prophet kissed the black stone and he wept on it. And that's sunnah when you perform hajj or umrah. And then he said that the black stone was white, but it turned black from the sins of the sons of Adam. And then he says that if you touch the two corners, one includes the black stone corner, it will erase your sin. Listen, because I'm going to give you that deed. Then he says that on the day of judgment, the black stone will be given two eyes and a tongue to intercede for you if you've kissed it and touched it. You know this, right? I, I know this. Christians bring this up, but I refute this. <coughs> yeah, I refute this. Okay, so yeah. repeat it. So why do you need to kiss a black stone to erase your sin? Yeah, so okay, yeah. So the hadith which you're uh, referring to states that the um, black stone be, um, became black because of the sins of Adam, but it, it does not no, say that sons the of stone... Adam, yeah, yeah, sons but... of Adam, meaning all yeah, you, okay. all you yeah, pagans who kiss it. Okay, so my mistake, but it does not say that the black stone forgives the sins. There's no any hadith that it says, says that it erases sins. Yes, yeah, it but... does. Here's Where does it, it forgives it. It forgives it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you, it. Why are you lying? I didn't say forgive you, liar. I said it erases your sins. Erases okay, but, your sins. Okay, that's 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 not what we what I dispute. I don't have any problem with that. But it you doesn't don't have say, a problem with a black stone erasing your sin, huh? Yes, I don't have any now problem. Now explain to me why does your black stone come to life and intercede for you? <coughs> Okay. What's what's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to intercede? Oh, so your, your shaitan subhanahu wa ta'ala turned you into stone kissers and have you kiss a black stone so that your sins can be erased and then that black stone will come alive so it can intercede before your shaitan subhanahu wa ta'ala so that your shaitan will then pardon you. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. Wait, what, was, what, what, what was the last part? I didn't hear it. What was the last part? The black stone will be given two eyes and a tongue so it can perform intercession for you. It's going to go before Allah to intercede for you. So you're okay with the black stone being your intercessor? I know it's going to intercess, but I'm not sure if it oh, says two eyes or two eyes oh, or okay. one. Let me give you that because, you, again, uh, you, you said, oh, let me give it to you. Hold on. Okay, so it's going to give eyes and it's going to speak for you. So this black stone that you pagans are licking, it's going to come to life and defend you. One second, let me get for you. Let me get you that deed. And yet you say with Tawheed, Ahad, Ahad. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get to Ahad in a minute. This is the rights of Hajj, chapter 27. So I gave you the link. You want to open up? I'm going to put the thing on the screen for everyone to see that you guys are pagan polytheists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm glad you say, yeah, yeah, you agree. Okay, so here it is. One second. Chapter touching the black stone. All right, so here you go. There you go. Right here. Right here. It was narrated that Sayyid bin Jubair said, I heard Ibn Abbas. You know who Ibn Abbas is? Yes. Do, yeah, it's a sahabi of Allah, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's sahabi, what? The sahabi, the companions. Yeah, not only sahaba, it's his first cousin. Their fathers are brothers. And then yeah, I'm going to yeah. ask you about, what did you say? You said the Prophet what? Uh, you said subhanahu wa ta'ala? What? No, I said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm going to ask you about that next. Okay. Yeah. The Messenger of Allah said, this stone will be brought on the day of resurrection. It will be given two eyes, two eyes, <clears throat> which to see, and a tongue with which to speak, and it will bear witness for those who touch it in sincerity. Yeah, so yeah. I, so, wait, yeah. So, first of all, wait, I could, can I respond to that? I hope you can, because you're... Yeah, okay. yeah. So, um, this hadith which you just quoted, it's Hassan, but... If oh. Hassan can be Hassan can be Hassan just means good, but it can be accepted. It will be only accepted if it doesn't contradict any Sahih Hadith. So in this case, it and can it doesn't be doesn't contradict accepted. any Sahih Hadith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can I, I could uh, I accept this. So I have no problem with this. Okay, this so case. you accept you have no problem. Okay, I'm glad. I mean, you, yeah, but that's that, that's still Tahid. It's still Tahid. No, it's not. It's a pagan <laughs> because the pagans, the pagans, said the same thing to your prophet that we only serve the stones. And the idols, so it can bring, bring us closer to Allah. Yes. That's chapter 39, verse 3 of the Quran. Here, you are kissing a black stone, touching a black stone, weeping on it, because it will bring you closer to Allah. So you're no better than the pagans. Yeah, so correlation with the pagans doesn't mean we are pagans. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Oh, sorry. Laugh again, because we're laughing at you too. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so 
correlation with the pagans does not mean we are pagans like pagans oh so when you act like a pagan worship like a pagan you're not a pagan oh that, yeah you make sense okay because the pagans also kiss the black stone but you're not a pagan we get it. but i could say the same thing for you you can say what you want but you <laughs> yeah. say tohid, right yeah, yeah i say to don't change the, the subject run like i yeah, yeah. okay, no no so no i don't change the subject why do you to bow to the black stone uh, why do you bow to the kaaba we that's the direction of which we pray to oh why do you bow to that direction because um it's a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay why is it his house when he doesn't live there it's it's considered to be the house of Allah. He, he why is it he, considered a house when he doesn't live there yeah so um there's one reason there's there are multiple reasons but i could name one reason oh, so give me one why yeah, yeah. do you why is yeah, it house so, when he doesn't live there so, so when you go from the kaaba direct up and and towards the sky the direction of the sky the, yeah, uh, straight yeah. up you will get to them uh, you'll get where to the so direction of the sky you just proved my point so your god is not in the kaaba he's above the sky right he's above the throne no no, no okay, i don't good. know you... so let me ask you a question and you didn't answer because you just refuted yourself but you're not listening because the the gin in your throat <laughs> okay so the kaaba allah doesn't live there because he's above the throne which is above the seven heavens so why are you bowing to the kaaba when it's not his house because it's his house means he lives there but he's it's vacant so who's living there yeah that's how how you perceive the term house no, i'm asking you house house bait allah house of allah that means it's his house so who's living there it's vacant and he does not live there, but he. If you Why go from, you to it? because I said he's. If you go from the Kaaba straight up, it's the it's in the direction of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So why straight. do I need to bow down to the Kaaba when I look straight up? What? Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said so. So why did Allah have you bow down to the Kaaba? Because that's what the pagans did before you. Yeah, because he has a morally sufficient reason for it. He has a reason okay, for it. What is the morally sufficient reason? I don't know. I cannot comprehend, okay, comprehend so everything what God says. All right, good. You just admit again. Thank you. You just admit that Allah made you blind, stupid parrots, mimicking the actions of the pagans, but still Tawheed. Ahad, Ahad. Okay, good. Now, <coughs> when you mentioned Muhammad's name, you said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What does that mean? Yeah, I could also say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. just means peace be upon him. I no, don't, no, or, or blessings be upon him. Not, it means more than that. Stop trying to lie to me, dude. I don't know why you think you're going to lie to me and going to get away with it. What does Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mean? Peace and blessings be upon him. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it does. No. The word peace is salam. Blessing is baraka. Blessings is barakat. That's not what it means. So what does sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mean? Yeah, so the meaning of salat changes depending upon no, the context. No, it doesn't. Also, also in the Quran, when Allah says um, salat, no, it doesn't. I, I'm not sure. It does. Because, no, it uh, doesn't. Open up chapter 33, verse 43 of the Quran and 3356. Show me how does the verb salah change? You're lying. See, you think you're it, gonna it does, lie. It does. I, I know this. I know these arguments. <laughs> and what does salah mean? If you know, that means you're deliberately lying. So no, good. No, I'm glad no, you're admitting no, you're no, lying. No, 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 no. I, I'm gonna explain to you. Salah yeah, changes okay. depending upon the context. No, it doesn't it, change. Yeah, the let verb me... is used in the same context. Yeah, yeah, but um, there's a difference between sallallahu um, ala um, lahu and ala. So no, when... don't change my argument. I didn't say your fake God prays to Muhammad. Okay, that wasn't okay. my argument. I asked you what sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means. So stop changing the argument. That wasn't my argument. Yeah, it means peace and blessings be upon. No, him. it doesn't. This is again your line. It, I know your God is Khairul Makarin. He's a deceiver because he's shaitan. Why do you have to lie like him? What does sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means? I just told you, blessing is the word baraka, peace is the word sallam. You do say sallam. What does sallallahu mean? Yeah, so, yeah, um, sallallahu means the praying uh, used typically, but Good, I, I, the, the, the meaning changes, changes. No, it doesn't because you're not listening. If you were to listen and tell okay. that genie who's uh, tickling your throat, making you want to piss in your ears, say, hey, genie, a'udhu billahi min Muhammad rajim. The word, the verb salah is used in the same context for Allah, angels, and believers. You don't change meaning in the same context when it's used for three different groups in the same context. Don't play that game with me. But wait, wait. What does you admit salah means pray, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, but I want to say something. If you if you put sallallahu alaihi wasallam in any Arabic translators uh, translation, it it translates. Yeah, you can, you can put it honor. in the toilet too. Let me, yeah, but every, every transition. let me repeat again because you're not listening 3350s when you don't listen i'm going to go after you and make it worse for you 
3356 says Allah and the angels perform salah. And then it says you are to perform salah as well. In 3356, 3356, it says Allah and the angels perform salah. When it says the angels perform salah, what does that mean? When the angels perform salah, it's the angels the angels pray for him, but in the, oh, in the... so we can hear. Look in. So when the angels perform salah, what does it mean? Yeah, so according to Sahih International, um yeah, I don't care about science today. I'm asking you, when the <laughs> angels perform salah, what does that mean? Yeah, so they pray for him. Okay. And then in that ayah, 3356, it says, O you who believe, you also do salah. So what does that mean, you do salah? Ooh, yeah, so when it addresses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that I didn't ask you about Allah. I said, when the ayah, listen better, when the ayah says, the ayah says, the ayah, Yes. All you who believe, also you do salah, you do salah for your prophet and salute him. What does it mean that you do salah for your prophet? Um, we do salah for our prophet. Um, what does it mean that you do salah? <coughs> um, shower blessings upon him. How do you shower blessings? Do you open up the shower and say shower? <laughs> no, no, no. With your no, no we're, we're, we, we, we invoke our blessings on your prophet. We invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask you do him, what again? We invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You pray, right? Yes. Okay, so here I want you to hear yourself. Be slow and listen to yourself. So in the ayah, it says the angels perform salah for your prophet. You are to perform salah for your prophet. You just admit that means angels and Muslims they pray for Muhammad, but then it says Allah and the angels pray. Perform salah. So, how does the meaning change? Yeah. So, the word salah is used um, several times in that verse. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, not one time, not only one once in that verse. Maybe, maybe two or three. All the angels doing it together. It says Allah it, and the angels. Wait. Does it say that? Let me look. Yes, at it, it does. Don't read Sai International. That's not the translation here. You're reading, uh, butchering the Sai International is more wicked and dishonest. But then, then I, I miss. I made a mistake because then it translates to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sends Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the angels send blessings upon. That's uh, not the Arabic. The Arabic has both of them performing the act together. Let me show you. Yeah, they show, both me, show me. Perform the act together. Here, let me give you a translation. I'll even translate it "bless" so you can be happy. Here it goes even though it's not the word blessed. So you can see it's the Allah and the angels. You saluna Allah. Okay, okay, but here. Yeah, okay, but so let's this... the translation blessing. Let's go with blessing. Yeah, yeah so you let's agree. But it's okay. I just want you to see. Surely Allah and his angels perform what's the Arabic term, salah, you saluna, which they translate as bless. Let's go with that. So... Do you agree that in the Arabic, Allah and the angels are doing this together? Um, That's the Arabic. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know what you mean with together, but they yeah. also, the angels also it do it. It says Allah and the angels are doing this. Doing what? Um, bless, sending blessings. Okay. So you see the wa and means Allah and the angels are doing this. What are they doing? Let's go with blessing. The verb is salah. It says Allah and the angels do salah ala upon for not to the prophet okay so you just said when the angels do the salah it means they're praying but it says allah and the angels are doing it yeah, yeah i made a mistake they are sending blessings okay so when allah and the angels are doing salah the verb salah you admit it that when angels do salah it means it means to pray but it says allah's doing it with them so how does yeah, the meaning change? Yeah, so I can I respond? Yeah, so I I made a mistake in my terminology. I said that the um, angels um, pray for the uh, pray for the prophet. Um, it should be translated to bless. They bless, they send blessings. You're upon gonna the bury prophet. yourself. How do the angels bless your prophet? By invoking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Say it again. By invoking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You, you see, I said you're gonna embarrass him. So oh. they bless your prophet by invoking invoking who? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That means when Allah and the angels do salah, they're both invoking, invoking to bless Muhammad. So who does your God invoke when he blesses Muhammad? Well, why does my God need to invoke someone? Because bless the me? verb salah means to invoke, to pray. No, I didn't know this. So that's yes, false. it does. 
No, no. I was just saying when they when they send blessing, when angels send blessings, they inv they invoke. The verb is salah. It means to pray. So they bless your prophet by praying for him. So when it says Allah and the angels perform salah, you saluna. That means Allah is also doing salah. What are you okay, not but, getting? Okay, but why don't you refer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it says you, tickling your throat. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, why don't you piss him out? Yeah, but it says you saluna ala nabi. Okay, so good. Allah, it says ala, not lahu. What yeah, does you saluna mean? You saluna in this context means send his blessings. So how do the angels send blessings? So they do what Allah does? They bless or they pray for a blessing? They they bless through through Allah through invoking by yeah, invoking. So now you know you're bearing yourself, right? How? That's good. You're bearing yourself. I'm glad. Okay, okay. And when you pray five times a day, I mean I'm gonna bury you. When you pray to Allah, you ask Allah to send salah upon Muhammad and his family as Allah sent salah upon the family of Ibrahim, right? You know that prayer when you pray five times a day? Yes, but again, I said I'm, okay, I, I'm not the Arabic speaker. Hold well on, calm down. Calm down, young man. Finish it for me because here I'm going to now bury you in your lies because when you pray five times a day, in your prayer, you ask Allah, you say, Allahumma, send salah, we won't translate it, upon Muhammad and his family as you sent your salah upon the family of Ibrahim, right? Um... Like, I'm not sure what you're... I, I'm not the Arabic speaker, so I cannot translate that. Okay, in the prayer when you say, Allahumma... Uh, I got to explain it. Okay, all right. Now, now when you recite Quran, when you recite Quran, that's an act of ibadah, right? Worship. You worship Allah by reciting Quran, correct? <laughs> um, is, is, the, is the reading the Quran a word? Um, uh, from worship? Ibadah? Um, well, this this is difficult. I'm not, I, I'm not sure if, um, if a Quran... It's ibadah. Is that's what it is. Part of your ibadah service worship is that you recite Quran. Okay, but okay. <laughs> okay. This is so not I haven't even teach you your deen. This is what's that's uh, okay, 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 okay. anyway. I can grant that. Okay. I can grant that, but okay. I want to know why does your Allah recite Quran <clears throat> a thousand years before creation? Yeah, so it's the speech of Allah, it's the uncreated um... why is he reciting it? Because it's the speech of Allah. So Allah is going to recite his speech to himself? Uh, no, no, but I, uh, first of all, I, I believe this is, I can explain this. The speech of Allah is in, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it will be, it will take one minute, but the speech of Allah, I believe the Quran is the speech of Allah, and the speech of Allah is a divine attribute of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I don't believe it's eternally spoken. I don't believe it's. Hey, breathe. Oh, don't speak 50,000 miles because what you're saying is about to bury your deen. Okay, okay. So, the Quran is a speech of Allah and it's uncreated. It's one of his sifat, right? Yeah, but it's not eternal. Not eternal. Not eternal. Uh, what does it mean? So it has a it's beginning? Eternally, no, it's not eternally spoken. Who cares about whether it's eternally spoken? I'm giving you hadith a thousand years before the creation of the heavens and earth. Allah was already speaking it because he was reciting Taha and Yasin. That's what the divine attribute yeah, yeah, the divine attribute of speech is uncreated and eternal. He's but it's reciting eternal. Quran in front of your eyes a thousand years before the creation of heaven and earth. He's yes. reciting it, meaning he's speaking it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, a thousand years before the creation of heaven and earth. Abu Huraira reported, God's messenger saying, a thousand years before creating the heavens and the earth, God recited Taha and Yasin. So he's reciting it before creation, heavens and earth. And when the angels heard the recitation, they said, happy are a people to whom this comes down. Happy are the minds which carry this. And happy are the tongues which utter this. Darimi transmitted it. Okay, so before creation, heavens and earth were created. There was no creatures, no insan. Allah by himself is reciting Quran to himself. Why? Yeah, so um, if this, I, I, first of all, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know about the authenticity of this hadith, but we can grant that. We can grant yeah, that. It's, it's naive prophet. It's naif jiddan. Yeah, yeah, okay. Why yeah. is he reciting the Quran to himself? Um, why is he reciting the Quran to himself? What's the problem? God oh, so you're okay with Allah speaking to himself, reciting to himself, and praying to himself? Okay, that's fine. I, 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 I don't know if it's to himself, but the angels heard okay, it. So. No, a thousand years before heavens and earth, there can't be angels before heavens and earth. Are you saying angels exist before heavens and earth? Um, the yeah, 
Why Can you tell that? that genie to leave you alone? Because the genie is tickling your throat. You're not focusing. Here, one more yeah. time. Abu Huraira reported, God's message saying, a thousand years before creating the heavens and the earth. This is before there are heavens and earth. You can't have angels before heavens and earth. Allah recited Taha and Yasin, but I'm going to show how bad you made it for your God. So he was reciting it to the angels. Oh, good job. So oh, Allah I, said, I, hey, I don't know. Jibreel, I, I, I don't know. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Take it easy. Come. This is your logic. Hey, Jibreel, Mikhail, let me recite Quran for you. Okay. Okay. Bismillah. Okay. A thousand years before the creation of the heavens and the earth, your God is reciting the Quran to himself. Why? Yeah, but I think you're having a misconception. It's not how we recite it. It's Allah's not a physical body. It's not a physical body. You are having, you're, imag you. you're imagining a physical body you, reciting I didn't something. Ask you that. Who, he's reciting Quran to himself. Why? I, I don't know if it's to himself. I don't know what it is. Okay, but a thousand years before heavens and earth, before creation, who was there besides Allah? <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. No, no one. Okay. So, so. You said Allah is not physical. Are you Salafi? Will you sell me for a fee or you're Ashari? I am Atari. I, I believe Allah is oh, So you're Atari. Beautiful Atari. So you just said Allah is not physical. So does Allah have two right hands? Yeah, but it's not physical. It's not physical. It's okay, not physical but right hand. Are they hands or is this metaphor? Um, well, one view would be one view would be that it's metaphor, but I don't hold it to that. But that's not your view. You're Atari, so that means you follow the Salafis of today that say that the three generations, the Salaf Salih, they did not make we they didn't explain. They said yes, Allah has hands. We don't know how, but we do not allegorize them. So Allah has two right hands. In a way which befits His Majesty, but okay, it's, not okay. it's not physical. It's not physical. It's not physical. I have a shin that befits. My majesty, not the majesty of a dog. My shin is not the same as the shin of a dog. So, but I have a shin. So, stop avoiding answering the question directly. Yeah, yeah. Does Allah have two right hands? Yes, but not like us. Okay, and my shin is not like the shin of a dog. So, you're not saying anything. So, Allah has two right hands, right? Yes. And he has a shin? No, yeah. He has, and he has a foot? Um, if yeah, I'm not mistaken, there's a hadith. Well, Khati, khati, it says to it. Okay, he has a okay. foot, right? Or I need to prove this to you. Yeah, yeah, but not physical. Not it's not. It's okay. not physical. Yeah, I know, not physical. But even angels have hands. They're not physical like us. So you're not saying anything. So, but he has a foot, right? Um, if I'm not mistaken, there's a hadith which says states yeah, that he, has a foot. he puts his foot over hell. Khati, khati. Okay, and it says on the day of judgment, you're going to recognize Allah by His shin. By his shin, yes. you're going to recognize him. He's going to reveal his shin, and you're going to say, this is my Lord. This is in Bukhari. Okay, so Allah has a shin, right? Um, yeah, but it's not physical. Okay, he said it again. Buddy, angels have hands and feet that are not physical like us. Does he have an actual shin? <coughs> yes. Okay. But okay. but how he has it? Allahu Alam. But how? What what it is? Yeah, I know. Allahu I know. That's this is because Allahu Alam. Billa kaif. Billa kaif. Allahu Alam. We know. We know. Okay. So he has a foot. He has a shin. He has two right hands. How many eyeballs does he have? <laughs> he does not have eyeballs. Like I don't know what. How you many mean. eyes he has? Okay. Let's say eyes. Yeah. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran that he has eyes. Yeah. How many? I don't know. You don't Probably know how many. Two. He has? Probably I don't know what it says about the what the verse says. Yeah, I'm not sure how many it he says. Has at least three eyes because the word for eyes in Arabic is plural. It's not dual. At least three eyes. How, how right. does how is that three not two? Where, because where there is the dual in Arabic ain, and then there's a the plural three or more. The Quran uses the plural three or more that he has three or more eyes. I'm not sure about that, but sure we okay, could so grant okay, it. Not sure. I just gave you one article right there. I put it in the private chat. Because I have questions about this. You got it? Right here. Yeah. Okay, let me get another one. Okay, so Allah has at least, let's be nice to you. We'll be we'll be charitable. Allah has at least two eyes. Let's be nice. Two eyes. Here's another article, guys. Here, save it. So he has two right hands. Two right hands. He has a shin. He has a foot. Now, does Allah have gonads? Does Allah have what? Gonads. That means, does he have testicles? I don't know. What do you mean by testicles? Like, Does he have uh, nuts? Does Allah have nuts? Yeah. Um, I because assume it no. It says in Bukhari 
that the rachim, the womb, pulled on his hekwa, pulled on his loins, and that Allah wears an izar, a waist. Wait, what's the, what's the hadith? It's in Bukhari. I just said it, dude. Yeah, but you you didn't you didn't reference it. Very well, I'm going to reference it right here. It's in the article here. So you're saying Allah is nuts. Uh, that's what the word hekwa means. It means you're growing. It means your loins. Here, right here. There you go. Abu Huraira reported, Allah's prophet is saying, that when Allah had finished creating all things, ties of relationship, that's rachim the moon, arose and seized, pulled the loins of the compassionate one. He said, stop. Stop. Okay, now. Okay, but I want references. Well, what's the reference? Okay, what, what, which which number? Let me read it, dude. It's Bukhari. Take it easy. It's Bukhari. Take it easy. Let me read it. And they said, this is the place for him who seeks refuge. These from being cut off, right? <clears throat> he replied, are you not satisfied that I should keep connection with him who keeps you united and sever connection with him who severs you? They said, certainly, O Lord. He replied, well, that is how things are. Abu Huraira said, recite, and he says, recite 4722 of the Quran, if you wish. Then is it to be expected of you, if you were put in authority, that ye will do mischief in the land and break your ties of kith and kin. Bukhari transmitted it. Bukhari. Okay, trans okay hold on. Okay. Dude, can you wait? What's the numbers? What's the numbers? Can you relax? It is the tafsir on 4722. And here it is, the translation by the Muslim that I got it from. I didn't make it up. So this is the tafsir, kitab al-tafsir, the tafsir from Bukhari on 4722. Who translated it? Here. <clears throat> the divine traditions, <clears throat> al-ahadith al-Qudsiya, hadith Qudsi, rendered into English by Dr. Ibrahim al-Saliq, Dar al-Fiqr, Beirut, Lebanon, chapter 12, the Lord of Glory, speech to the Womb ties of kith and kin, pages 80 and 82. Yes, and I don't know who that is. That's not an authority. I don't care. It's Bukhari. <laughs> it's, but the tafsir is not an authority. I don't no, know who's tafsir. To me. It's not tafsir, monkey. It's a hadith Qudsi. It's in the section of Bukhari, Kitab al-Tafsir. He's quoting your prophet, quoting Allah, hadith Qudsi. Okay, but could you give any link? So I could... Uh... This one, you have to go buy the book. I have it in my library. Let me find it for you. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not sure. What... <laughs> if I give you Arabic Bukhari, can you read Arabic? <laughs> no, you can read. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then zip your lip. Kiss the black smoke for a minute. Hold on. See? When you laugh, I'm going to laugh at you. <laughs> Hold on. One second. Here you go. <laughs> See? When you laugh. The genie in your throat that's pissing in your throat, we're going to laugh at him here in front of your eyes. Okay, so you go, okay, here it is. Here, here you go. Okay, here's the quote. Here it is, guys, so he doesn't lie. El Ahadith El Qudsiya. Okay, here you go. Page number. and uh... Yeah, page number. I'm going to show it to you right here. Page number. Page number. I'm from Netherlands. Okay. Can you see it right there? Read it for me on the screen. Read it. <coughs> Abu Huraira reported Allah's, um, Allah's uh, Abu Huraira reported Allah's Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as saying that when Allah had finished creating all things, the ties of relationship arose and ties of relationship arose and signs the size the loins of the compassionate ones. Aha. Uh -huh. They want to read the Arabic? Um okay, sure. Yeah, I, I cannot read Arabic, but okay. sure, I can. So you see, it's there. <laughs> you see it? Okay, okay. Okay, but so we... you're going to stop that game, playing games with me? Okay, but do I know who Bukhari transmitted it? Yes, this book can say it, but how do I know it's true? Because it is in Bukhari, Khulkhari, it's Hadith Qudsiya. So stop your nonsense. Read the Arabic. Where is it from? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot read Arabic. Yeah, sorry, okay, but... Shut your mouth and explain to me where did your Allah get his nuts from, his, his loins? <clears throat> yeah, so I'm not really, um, I haven't really looked into this hadith, but um, so I cannot really give an answer right now. So maybe, maybe it's, but what, what size is you Ibn Kathir. You ready for Ibn Kathir? Because your, your, your Allah, he wears 
an izar, a waste sheet. So this one, I want to see if you're going to say this is a lie too. Here you go. All right, here it is. Okay, here you go. Because you didn't like that one. Now this one's online, guys. So he doesn't lie to us. Alam.org, English translation of Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir. Your God wears an izar, a waste sheet. Here it goes. You ready? You click the link? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, yes, here. This is on Ibn Kathir on 47.22. And who narrated it? Wait, wait, wait. You said, how I know it's Bukhari, Kulkhari. <laughs> here, this is how we know. This is from Ibn Kathir, guys. Click on the link so he doesn't lie to you, this guy. <laughs> All right, now watch you. <laughs> okay. Al-Bukhari recorded from Abu Huraira that Allah's messenger said. And what did he say? Here you go. There you go. After Allah completed creating the creation, the womb, Rahim, stood up and pulled at the lower garment of the most merciful. Merciful. He said, stop that. It replied, my stand is here and the stand of one seeking refuge in you from severance of ties. So I want to ask, why does your Allah wear a garment? This is the way she, the azar that people wear. Why is yeah, it wearing so, a garment? Yeah, so could I, yeah, so first of all, you're portraying it like it's it's a human, it's a garment like humans wear. I didn't ask if, that. Why is he wearing a garment? Because it says the womb yanked on it. It's yanking on something. Okay, but how weird does it say it's physical garment? Where does it say that? Pulled on the lower garment. Pulled. What do you pull? You're putting fill air, it's in front of your eyes. Yes, but but it's not so yeah okay why is your god wearing a garment um i don't know okay so we I, established I that the hekwa of allah from bukhari we said right here and ibn kathir your god has a garment that men put around their loins so you don't see their nuts no, so no, your god has a, a waist sheet or a garment to wrap around his no loins because of his nuts his nutsack so what kind of god is this that you have a god who has nuts yeah so you're misportraying it because it's not a garment like humans wear you're, I didn't you're... Ask you that because even yes. Allah's nuts is not like my nuts okay but how do you why did you do with your hands like um um how did the like... pull? what is it pulling on okay here this is we're gonna use your logic guys look at the logic okay the womb pulls on allah's uh lower garment so this is what the womb did so okay, how whatever it did, it pulled on it. Here, yeah, the womb yeah, but stood up. So here's the womb standing up. Here, I'm gonna do it for you to show you. Here, this is the womb. I'm the womb. Okay, I'm standing up, and then here I'm pulling on Allah's garment. Allah, stop. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'd is this? Stop proof? changing the subject. Answer the question. Your God wears a garment. Because your God has what's in the Arabic is hakwa, meaning he has nutsack. Your womb pulled on it, and Allah said, stop. Whether it's physical or spiritual, yes, I know his garment's not like my garment, like his nuts are not like my nuts. So explain to me, how does your Allah have nuts, and why is he wearing a garment? Yeah, so I could grant that he wears a garment, but where does it say again that he wears nuts, that he has nuts? Okay, or... well, okay here you go, one more time. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know what loins mean? Do you know what uh, loins mean? No, uh, actually, no. One more time. So what does it mean? What does it mean? It? Read it one more time. Okay, okay. And size the loins of the compassion. You know what loins are? No. The loins of a man? It no. means his testicles, his penis. <laughs> it means the area from which children come. Okay, but we'll <laughs> That's why he wears a garment okay, to cover his nuts. Okay, so but first of all, who says that his loins are, if you grant that, who says his loins are like the loins like you have? Like the, are your the nuts, nuts like the nuts of a dog? No, but I'm a human. Okay, but is good. your human nuts the same as the nuts of a dog? No, we don't have the same uh, nuts. So, you don't, so yes, okay, Allah's nuts are not like my nuts. They're bigger than my nuts. Okay, so what? No, but it's, but, yeah, but my nuts are physical. His head, yeah, this okay, is, so Allah's nuts, they're spiritual. Okay, so I, I wouldn't like not have, have nuts. I wouldn't like using the word nuts. Okay, I, penis. I would, I, no, He's no, got not a spiritual penis. penis. I, it says the wounds. It said loins. It said loins. loins. Okay, here, let's go. Let's, let's, help, let's, you use, with, let's help you with English because you're from Netherlands. Maybe you don't know English. Let's <laughs> let's go dictionary. Okay, okay. 
man lines up that oh Allah. okay but even okay but i want to say something even if we grant this how does this disprove islam uh, i'm generally what? asking I'm no genu- because i'm asking uh, what is it why does your allah have he has a shin he has a foot he has loins okay so yes. he has two right hands at least three eyes so your allah is one grotesque looking monster right <laughs> no but again you're misportraying it because it's not physical you're 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 imagining okay. it like a monster, you monster is physical. Physical, i'm gonna bring my cat to piss on the quran stop telling me it's not physical that's not my question but he still has them right yes but it's not like okay, let us. me show you a picture of what your god looks like you see no this picture see, right you're the, see this is already where you're gonna um, hey, get it, get it, get it. Hey, get it, get it, get it. Because okay, I'm going to show you this physical. Picture. The, the image is the image is physical. Take see. Your God has huge nutsack. Hold on. Yeah, but the image is physical. Okay, buddy. So he has spiritual penis and spiritual nuts. Where okay. I did not say spiritual, but it's not okay, physical. Okay, so then what is it? His hands. They're not physical, I don't. I don't know. But it's not like oh. us. It's not like well, us. You know and enough it's not to physical. tell me what it's not. Okay. Oh, the take it easy. Yes, because that's Here's a, what that's your a... Allah looks like. Can you sh- take it easy and zip the lip here? Hold on. Let me show you. This is it right here. This is the picture. This is what Allah wears. No, because again, that's physical and it's like, uh, first of all, it's okay, physical. Okay, so no, it says no. he has a garment. That's the garment that covers your loins. So when the wool pulled on the garment, this is what Allah would have. Now, this guy's legs, they're very white. So is Allah's legs white or brown? But where does it say it's the same garments like humans have? It's, I didn't ask not... that. It says it pulled on the garments. Pulled. What yes. is it pulling on? the garments but it's not physical and okay. it's not like us it's so not how like do you us. pull on something that's not material what's the problem Why is it not possible? okay so now allah's hands and his foot and his shin and his loins and his garment are they created or uncreated i believe uncreated stuck for allah stuff allah's hands are created no, I said uncreated, uncreated. Oh, uncreated, okay. So again, this is what Allah would look like if, but it may be not white, but Muhammad yeah, is yeah, but, okay. yeah, yeah, but again... So you, wait, I'm, let people hear you again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, well, I Allah's keep... hands and their foot, they're uncreated, right? Could I respond to that? Yeah, they're are created or uncreated? Yes, they are uncreated, but the image you showed, it's a physical image. That's, okay. that's, where we are, that's the misconception. That Muhammad, you are, the white you're spreading a misconception. Don't change the subject, dude. Forget this guy. That's Muhammad, the white man. Come back to Allah and talk about him. So we just heard you say Allah's hands and his foot and his shin and his loins, they're uncreated. So that means Allah, if he has hands, unlike the hands of a dog or a mouse, but he still has hands, unlike anything, and a foot, that means Allah, if he didn't create these attributes, characteristics, I don't want to say body parts because you're going to get offended. That means he's always existed with at least two right hands and a foot and a shin with eyes. All right. So my question is, if he's always existed with these, then that means Allah has always had these attributes unlike anything in creation. But that means he has a shape. No, no, not a physical shape, not a physical shape. Here we go again. Don't make my cat piss on your crown. Stop saying physical. I didn't say physical. I said shape. Okay, sure. Okay, so Allah has always had a shape, right? Sure, what's the problem? The problem is if he's always had a shape, then that shape has to have space. And for it to have space means that that space is not created. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Could you repeat that? Could you repeat that? If Allah has a shape, unlike anything in creation, then that shape has to have space to occupy, to exist. Because where would the shape dwell? It can't just dwell in nothing. So that means there is a space that Allah occupies that's not created. <laughs> that no, I, I, I don't believe. I, I don't know how you. I don't know how you derive at that. Conc- wait, wait. I don't know how you derive at that conclusion, but I would disagree. Allah spaces. Yeah, Allah spaces. Okay, so let's put that aside. This one. I'm glad yeah, yeah, but know. yeah, but could I respond to you? Allah's not sacks again that you said is not there. The yeah, one. yeah, but could I respond to you? I, 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 I know what you're doing, and I could do no, the I'm same. Way. It. No, it's uh, not no. your prophet doing. I'm doing it. Yeah, but I, 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 could, I could make the wait. I could make the same <laughs> argument. I could make the same argument that Jesus no, is begotten. No, you can't because we believe Jesus became man, so he has no, a no. physical body because he's man. Stick with your Allah, who's not a man, but he has bigger nuts than you and me. Okay, yeah, stick with we, Allah. Yeah, but we have okay. to be consistent. We have to be consistent. No, you're not listening. 
we believe Jesus became man. He didn't always have a body. But you, your God always had nuts that are bit much bigger than your nuts and mine. Yeah, so but you believe, he, you, you believe he was born. Don't change the subject. Now let's come back to your Quran. Okay, okay. Your Quran. I, I know you're trying to be run. Consistent. Yeah, but you I want to be consistent. Like I want to be I, I know be you consistent. want to run like Aisha did when you're prophet. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay, the Quran. You said it's uncreated, right? Yes. Okay. So the Quran, is it Allah or is it other than Allah? Other than Allah. It's it's not it's not it's an attribute of Allah, it's not Allah himself. So it's not Allah? It's 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 distinct from the essence. It's not the essence. Okay, it's so Allah. it's from the essence of Allah, so it's inseparable from Allah. It's distinct from the essence, but it's not separated. It's not separated from the essence. It can't be distinct from the essence in that if you're saying it's not part of the essence. It's part of the essence, right? It's a it's an aspect, it's an aspect of Allah, it's not a part of Allah. Can you re can you repeat my question? See if you're pretending you're listening. Yeah, so you, you said you question? said Yes, yeah, so you said you said it was part of Allah, but uh, Okay. Because the essence of Allah is yes. inseparable from Allah. And therefore, if the Quran is an attribute of the essence, it's inseparable from Allah, right? Yeah, it's it's not. Yeah, you can it cannot be separated, oh, or you cannot. Separate, so you, it's the not Quran separated. is inseparable from Allah, right? Uh, yes, uh, yes. It's a, it's an attribute of Allah. So then, yeah. how is it the Quran will speak to Allah and Surah Al Baqarah, Surah Imran will speak to Allah? Where does it say that? Oh, you want to see where it says that? Okay, let me get it. <laughs> By the way, guys, about... here's another picture of what Allah would look like if he was a white man. Here you go. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> I said it's no, said that's it's physical. Physical, guys, physical. This is what Allah would look like if he's a white man, but he's not white. Yeah, but that's a physical that's image again. Physical. He's not physical, yeah. but he has a garment that covers his loins. Yeah, but Jesus also begotten. So I would say, I would say, Jesus, what is it? You believe Jesus is begotten, and okay, but now no monkey. We don't believe Jesus before he became man had a, had a body. Monkey. It's yeah, when he was born of the Virgin Mary, he had a body. <laughs> but your God, before creation, before creation, he had a nut sack, and his nuts are not like my nuts. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I, I, don't change the subject. Shh. Stone liquor. I know you want to run like Aisha. Take it easy. No, I want to be consistent. No, no, you don't want to. Do you believe oh. Allah became a man? No, so stop lying, you son of Muta. No, I want to be consistent with your reasoning. Before he became man, did not have a body. Stop, son of Muta. Yeah, now let's go to the Quran. Okay, okay. If you don't want to, okay, sure. Yeah, because you're changing the subject like a coward. Don't run like Aisha. Stop for Allah. Do you play with dolls like Aisha did? Yeah, but it was allowed. It was she was allowed to play with dolls. Because why was uh, it allowed for her to play with dolls? Because she was a um, because she was a little girl. See, that was before the, before wait, wait, the consummation. Wait, wait, wait. So I'm glad you're Why? Why it was, was, it was it was before the consummation? No, it wasn't. You're a filthy liar. It says that Nothing. Muhammad took her to his house and she was playing with her dolls. Are you lying to me again? It, what was that? Uh, was that at the age of nine? Yes, Sahih Muslim. That. Yes. Okay, okay. Then in that case, she played with other dolls because uh, dolls are oh, allowed to play with dolls, which are dolls. Not, she played with dolls. Yeah, but, dolls. Yeah, but a different different kind of dolls which are don't have it a shape. It doesn't matter. But, According no, to Ibn Hajar al Askalani, <coughs> children can play with images, but when they reach puberty, they can't play with any image. Stop your yes, lying. She, yeah, she could play with the dolls. She could play okay, with the dolls. Shut which your mouth. Stop shape. changing the subject. Shut okay, up. Okay. You're changing the subject. Let's go back okay. here. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Tell that genie to stop. Rubbing your nutsack like the room rubbed Allah's nutsack. Yeah, but I will. I I I, res I will respond <laughs> to you. <laughs> the door she played with didn't have a shape. Shh, shut up. Okay, okay, okay. If you, I know you if want to you... change the subject. Shut up. No, no, I want to be consistent, but sure. No, you're not being consistent. You're being consistently stupid, like your prophet. But here you go. I want to be consistent with your reasoning. Get to the hadith. Shut up, man. Read the hadith, Ibn Muta. Shut up. Read it. Stop changing subject. Abu Umama said that he heard Allah's messenger say, recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. Now, recite the two bright ones, Al-Baqarah, Al-Baqarah, that's chapter 2, and Surah Al-Imran. Why? For on the day of resurrection, they will come as two clouds or two shades or two flocks of birds in ranks, Pleading for those who recite them. Okay, let me repeat it again because I know your mind is still on Aisha. Okay, recite the two bright ones, Al Baqarah and Surat Al Imran, for on the day of resurrection, they will come 
Surah Al Baqarah, Surah Al Imran, they will come as two clouds. So they're going to appear either as clouds or shades or two flocks of birds in ranks. And they will plead for those who recite them. This is Sahih Muslim. In case you missed yeah, but it. Yeah, but where's, the, where's the separation? Where's the separation? Yeah, 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 yeah. Surat Al Baqarah, Surat Imran will come as birds. They're coming together. Read it. Yes, it will come as it will come as birth okay. according to this so hadith. Surat al Baqarah and Surat al Imran will come and do what with Allah? Intercede. Intercede. So they're going to be interceding with Allah. It's not. Where's the separation? I don't. I Are don't you? Know were you is. born stupid, or did you become stupid from kissing the black stone? If they're talking to Allah, that means they're separate from Allah. Jackass. No, no. no. How? <laughs> How is that the separation? Surat al-Baqarah and Surat al-Imran are coming separately before Allah. So is that Allah coming to himself? No, it's not It's not the essence. It's not Allah. So Surat al-Baqarah, Surat al-Imran are coming separately before Allah and they're talking to Allah. Where is the separation? It's in front of your eyes. They're coming as clouds? Yeah, yeah. So they will come. They will... So how does the Quran speak with Allah if it's a speech of Allah? Is Allah speaking to himself? Yes, Allah speaking. They, they will come. They will, it's different than uh, the essence. How does but, Allah have the Quran speak to him if the Quran is a speech of Allah? That means this is Allah speaking. So is Allah speaking to himself? Answer the question. Uh, Allah could speak through birds. Birds. That's not. Uh, that's Allah can a, speak through birds, and those birds are his speech. Well, he can speak. He can speak the word of. He can speak the, um, the word of God through. The, so he's going to speak to himself as Surat Al Imran and Surat Al Baqarah. So. Surat Al-Imran, Surat Al-Baqarah will show up. Let's say here. Okay, this is Surat Al-Baqarah. This is Surat Al-Imran. Okay, so let's just imagine. And I'm Allah. Hey, Allah. Hey, Surat Al-Baqarah, how you doing? Surat Al-Imran, you're looking good today. Hey, Allah, yeah? Can you do me a favor? What do you want me to do? You see the stone liquor who's debating Sam Shimon? Yeah? He used to recite me. Can you bless him? Oh, of course. What about you, Surat Al-Imran? Yeah, you know, can you also do me a favor? Sure. What do you want me to do for you? Yeah, that stone liquor right here that was debating Sam Shimon. His family recites me. Can you bless them? Oh, of course, Surat Al Imran, Surat Al Baqarah. Even though you're me and I'm you and you're my speech, so I'm talking to myself. Okay, guys, see you. Yeah, but this is how you're portraying it. This, okay. this is not Let how me it read happened. That again. One more time. Allah, Allah also speaks through a if they're to a burning bush, if yeah, I'm so not mistaken. Wonder, it's not Allah speaking through it, it's the chapters of the Quran. That are coming to Allah, which you told me are his speech. Are you listening to yourself here? Yes, one more yes, time. yes, yes. It's a speech. So mm -hmm. the speech of Allah will come to Allah and speak to Allah. That's what you just said. Are you listening to yourself here? One more yes. time. Okay, so then stop playing games. Just say, yeah, the speech of Allah will come to Allah in a shape and a form and talk with Allah. Good. Abu okay, Umama but... said, I heard Abu Umama, meaning the father of your mama, Heard Allah's messenger say, recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. Recite the two bright ones. Surat al-Baqarah, Surat al-Imran. My daughters, God bless them. Anyway, Lord Jesus, save them from these Muslims. Please, Lord. Okay, okay. <laughs> Al-Baqarah and Surat al-Imran, for on the day of resurrection, they will come. They will come. As two clouds or two shades or two flocks of birds and ranks pleading for those who recite them. So they're going to be pleading. So let's do that again one more time because I like that imagery. Here, let me get you something too similar. One second. Uh -huh. Okay, but the, the oh, attributes okay. again are not separated from the essence. This is your who own. Who cares about separated? They're appearing No, but I'm, I'm telling you, uh, you the, attribute, the speech of Allah here, is, here is the same from the essence but not separate. Okay. Jackass. I don't want to insult Jackass. When it comes appearing in two forms and they stand before allah that means here they're appearing separately from each other so the chapter two will appear this way and chapter three appears this way and you're going to see them both with their own shape and they're going to be talking to allah so imagine this handsome bald guy is allah god forbid may the lord never let that happen anyway so here's surat al-baqarah here's surat imran and here's allah when you see them, you're going to see them as three separate things. So here's Surat Al-Baqarah that you're telling me is Allah's speech. It's talking to Allah. So that means Allah will now appear or Allah's speech, which is Allah speaking, 
will appear in a visible shape and then speak to Allah. So Allah is speaking to himself. Um, I don't know. I don't know what will happen, but but That's again, what I just said. no. But I, I'm I'm telling you, it, it's it's said. It's not it's not set apart. It's not set apart. But it, it's different. It will come. Okay, so hold on. The Surah Al Imran, Surah Al Baqarah, they appear as two bottles of perfume because it says they either appear as birds or clouds. These two are they the same shape? No. Are they the same? No. So how do you know they're two? How do I know they're two? I can see it. Okay, so when the hadith says Surat Al Baqarah and Surat Al Imran together appear in a shape, either as clouds or as flocks of birds, that means they're going to appear separately in two different shapes. So this time I'm going to know, oh, this is Surat Al Baqarah. Hi, Surat Al Baqarah. Hi, Sam Shimon. Hi, Surat Al Imran. Hi, Sam Shimon. And then they're going to appear before the throne. So you're going to see those two are not Allah, but they're speaking with Allah. Allahumma, ya Allah, have mercy on this stone liquor who's debating Sam Shimon. Okay. Are you getting it now? Yeah, sort of. But again, okay. the so on the day of judgment, how are you going to know? This is Surat Al Imran, Surat Al Baqarah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's not the day of judgment. Time. I One don't know. Oh, hold on. Your hadith says it. Sahih Muslim. So you didn't get it the first 50 times. Let's try it again. One more time. Recite, notice the last part, recite the two bright ones, Al-Baqarah and Surat Al-Imran, for on the day of resurrection, they will come as two clouds. So you're going to either see them as clouds yes, or two shades or two flocks of birds. So here's a flock of birds. And here's another one. You get it now? Or I need to read it a fourth time. No, yeah, I get it. I get it. But again, okay. what, so that's what how you're gonna know. That's how you're gonna know. Okay, that this is yeah. Surat al-Baqarah and Surat al-Imran. That's how you're gonna know because okay. you're gonna see them. Two okay, flocks but, of birds. Well, hold on, let me but, do this. What's your argument? Okay, my argument is Surat al-Baqarah, Surat al-Imran is the speech of Allah, right? Yes. So you're telling me Allah's speech will appear. Two different parts of his speech, which is part of it, will appear talking to Allah. So is Allah talking to himself? I don't know what will happen, but... Um... Okay, well, you're honest. But I want to do the imagery again so you can sink in. On day of resurrection, here is Surat and Baqarah, Surat and Nah. They come as flocks of birds. Okay, okay, but I don't know if, it's, okay. it's, if Allah is speaking I to himself. Know I don't know. How do the chapters of the Quran speak with Allah if it's the speech of Allah? How do the chapters of Allah speak with Allah if it's, if it's the, the speech of Allah? Of Allah I don't know what will happen. Again, I'm okay. I'm saying to you. That's a nice kappa. Nice kappa. Allahu Alam. Okay, that's a nice Yeah, kappa. Allahu Alam. I don't know what will happen. Okay, I don't so know how it will... Okay, guys, you heard it, right? Allahu Alam. Only Allah knows. See the cheap excuse? When they but can't Jesus... answer something, they get buried. Allahu Alam. But but Jesus also talks to himself. Okay, so now that we talked about your tawheed, the toe that you heed, we want to put aside because now we are talking about Aisha. Now let's talk about it because you're saying, yeah. how what, how old was she when your prophet had sex with her? Nine. Okay. But again, what, but no, hold we... on, wait, wait. You said she she didn't have dolls when she he took her to the house. At the age of nine. When he took her to the house at nine, yes, it says. I'm going to show it to you. Okay, okay but do you know what Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin said? Um, what, did he, sure. what did Sheikh uh, Uthaymin say? He, he said that it probably Aisha radiallahu an, at the age of nine played with dolls which don't have a shape, which dolls are allowed to play But she with. was still playing with dolls, right? Yes, what's the problem? You, you're that sick? You don't see a problem with it? No, but according to the biological definition of adults, she was an adult. No, she wasn't. You're full of crap. Okay, do you want to do I'm gonna ask you a question. Is no, don't change the subject. You it's, it's on the topic. It's on the topic. Is that child? No, it's not to... on the topic. So you're saying when a 54-year-old bastard takes a girl with dolls at the age of nine and he puts his penis in her, she was an adult? According to the biological definition, yes. Give me the verse from the Bible that says nine-year-old is mature enough for a 54-year-old bastard, son of Satan, to put his penis in her. Give me the verse. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the verse. Yeah, so Numbers 31, 18 says that you can... Okay, um, read 15 to 18 so I can bury your prophet. Yeah, yeah. Dog is the son of a whore. It says read you it. can keep children for yourself. So. Read it. Yeah, yeah. 
Because okay, I'm so, going to show your prophet is a bastard son of a whore. Because what yeah, you yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, 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 sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, so, sure, sure. So your mother's definitely... a whore too. You know that, right? But go ahead. Why? Wait. Well, okay. Because sure. you get married to a bastard like you because you just lied. Read it. Okay. Behold, these you are a son of a whore. I want you to know this because I'm going to embarrass you with that passage because it shows you're filthy like your prophet. Okay. Okay. Behold. Okay. These... okay. Read it. Be, behold, these caused the children of Israel to the council, council of Balaam. It's talking about children of Israel to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. What did they do? Pagan? Stoniker? What did they do? To commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. Yeah, Peor. Okay. Because you don't know the context because you're a dumb only bastard. Oh, like okay. 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 We, we can read okay, further. Okay. 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 So it good. says, and there was a plague among the congregations, congreg okay, great, great, great. congregation of the Lord. Now, therefore, kill. Uh, every male among the little ones and kill every woman that had known a man wait, wait, kill what women kill women like your mother who has slept that with had, the that, that, that had, had known a man by lying with him okay. but the wait, next read verse... it again pagans calm down because i'm going to bury you in this passage okay okay so it says kill women like your mother who did muta with the shia keep reading known... yeah so but all the women children that have not yes, good now this is why you're a bastard like muhammad it okay, says okay. spare the children now can you tell me where it says have sex with them but what does it mean to give for yourselves? What Can does you it mean show to... me? I'm going to show you. I'm going to bury your prophet. Can you show yeah. me where it says have sex with them? It says keep for yourselves. I can do everything with them. Can you show me where yourself means have sex with them instead of bringing them and making them part of Israel? Show me where it says have sex with them. It says keep a life for yourselves. That's okay. scary. That's and scary enough. Where does it say have sex with them, you son of a whore? Bro, if I can keep them for myself, I can do everything with them. No, you can't because Deuteronomy 21, 10, 14, you son of a whore. It says you cannot have sex with a captive. She must be a woman and you must marry her. Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14. That's why I say you're a son of a okay, whore. Okay, okay. what's the reference? What's Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14. What does it say? You read it. Go ahead, open okay. it. Okay, okay so now, as you turn to Deuteronomy 21, I just buried you because you are a son of a whore to lie about the Bible. The young girls were spared because they didn't have sex and commit idolatry they were not spared to be raped like your prophet raped Aisha they were spared as mercy but the same God told Moses when you find a captive she must be a woman not a child and you must marry her not rape her like your dog Muhammad did Where does Deuteronomy it say 20, shut up and read Deuteronomy 21 10 and 14 because I just buried you and watch what I want to do to your prophet now because you did this okay, okay. But Deuteronomy 21 10 and 14 when you go out to um, go war against your enemies and the Lord your God gives them in your hand and you take them um, slowly captive. and loud. So you take the enemies as captives and you see among them cap captives a beautiful woman and you. Does you it say spike. a child? Okay, but where does it say you cannot uh, have it? You cannot keep a Read child. It. Does it okay. say child? In the other verse says it's child. No, it didn't say have sex with them, you son of a whore. It says keep alive for yourself. If you're going to have sex with them, what do you do with them? Read. Don't let me okay, bring okay. my this on your Quran. Read. Okay, okay. okay, so it says, and you bring um, her home to your house. She shall have her head and a bear her na nails. Loud, so shall... here, because this verse buries your Quran. Keep okay, reading. Okay. So it says, and she shall take off the clothes in which she was captured and shall remain in your house and limit her father and her mother for a um, for, um a full month, and after that, you may go into her and be your husband, and she be what? Be her rapist, like your yes, prophet you, raped yes, women. Yes, so you, you can, you can have, you can marry children. You, you shouldn't. You... No, you stupid bastard! It says a woman, not a child. Read yeah, but it. where does say you cannot marry a child? It where doesn't does it say, say children. The verse there, the children you spare them, but when you marry them, they are women, and you marry them, you don't rape them like your prophet raped Aisha. Wait, where does it say read you cannot marry children? Shut up and read it. Yeah, but this verse only addresses women, so is it does because not say because that's the only woman you can have sex with, you idiot. That's the point. It does not say that. It does not say that. This show me number thirty-one where it says the children you can have sex with them, or I'm going to bring the Quran and have my cats piss on it. Show it to me it's, again. It says um, okay. now go to Surah the Nisa four twenty-four. Open yes. up your Quran, Surah the Nisa four twenty-four, because I'm going to show you how yeah, the Bible yeah, yeah. proves that your prophet is a whore, a son of a whore. Yeah, so Open are you going to read it with context? Open up 424. Shut up and read your Quran. 424. Because <coughs> you did this, now I'm going to insult your prophet and bury him because you have no honor. Because this is why you Muslims need to be thrown out of Europe. Because you will rape women and children because you are sons of whores. Now read 424. Okay. This is what you did, Europe. You brought these dogs in, these whores in. Yeah, but it does not say you cannot marry children. Read 
24 24 stop barking okay so also forbidden are married women um, out loud ex- so we can hear you so we can bury your prophet okay also forbidden are married women except female captives in your possession this what does is that almost- mean what does that mean yeah the right hand possessions the female captives you acquire in well, war a captive like your mother who's married and i can take her captive as a jihadi you're okay if i have sex with her okay so first of all this is a difficult topic but female no, it isn't uh, a difficult. i have the hadith don't lie answer the question yeah 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 so right if hand pos- i am a jihadi and i attack the netherlands and i take your mother and your father is alive and i take your nine-year-old sister <clears throat> does your fake prophet and your whore prophet say i can have sex with them yeah so it will take me one minute to explain this but no, if you no. do if, if you Funny, want me to explain to answer, I, I can explain to the bible i'm going to bury you for what you yeah. did to the bible yeah, answer yeah. the question yes yes so first so yes, of all, wait hold on we didn't hear you yes so what? if i am a jihadi and i take your mother who's married and your nine-year-old sister even though your mother is married your nine-year-old sister she's not married so i can do to her what muhammad did to aisha but your mother who's married according to this verse I can have sex with her, yes or no? By marriage, by marriage. No, it doesn't say marriage, you're lying. But even if marriage. So you're saying your filthy God will allow me to take a married woman and marry her even though her husband's still alive. Okay, so do you know about Quran chapter 24, verse number 33, where it says women have the right... Yeah, 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 but this is the context. Shut up, address the point. Yes, I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain to you. No, 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 don't treat yeah. your mother as a prostitute if she no, doesn't. No, no. It, it says women have the right to re- refuse their right no, and possession, and you shall pay her. You, the women no, it says it. that you compel to prostitution, you son of a whore. Deal with four twenty four. I know it's also talking about slaves. It's talking about also by shut sl- up. I'm gonna block you if you don't listen. Shut up. Listen. I know you're trash. Twenty four thirty four says. You don't force your women into prostitution. That's a different context. Yeah, yeah. Read, read further. Read further. Okay, you stupid bastard. I'm going to give you another chance because I'm going to read Muslim to bury your dog, Muhammad. Listen again. Shut up. Listen. According to 424, Sahih Muslim Sunan Abu Dawood, a woman taken captive with her husband alive. I'm going to show your prophet says, you can have sex with her. It's not about her permission. You're misquoting 2433. So answer my question. You can, Answer yeah. my question again. Or I'm yes. going to bring my cat to piss on your Quran. So if I'm a jihadi and I attack your place in the Netherlands and I yes. take your mother and your dad's asleep, does your Satan Allah allow me to have sex with her? By, marriage, you know, yes, by, about, by marriage, yes, yes. Okay, so let's repeat. Yeah, but so with even the though she's married, I can still take her and marry her? Yeah, but with the permission of their Say it again. Sister, Shut up. Yeah with the permission of the no owner. it doesn't say you're full that's of the crap next, that's the next verse okay no that's no you don't bastard verse. let me read it shut up i'm gonna bury you your prophet it. shut up i'm gonna bury your prophet because your prophet said you're a liar you're a son of a whore you son of a whore here it goes here you go let me read it to you okay here you go you thought i'm stupid like muhammad okay here you go let me show it to you here you go you ready uh-huh with their permission you son of a whore. Okay, okay. If, you weren't, if you weren't a son of a whore, you wouldn't be defending. So you go, hey, get, 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 get. and then I'm going to send you to Mecca to lick the black stone, you son of a whore. It is narrated on the authority of Ibn Abbas that he said, when it was the day of Hunayn and Allah Almighty helped the Muslims conquer Hunayn, the Muslims got female captives from the people of the scripture. That's Jews and Christians. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. At, shut up and let me read before I bring the Shia on your mother. If a man like to have sexual intercourse with any woman of them whom his right hand possess, she would say to him, I have a husband. She doesn't want to do anything. I have a husband. But then your dog Muhammad said, the messenger Allah was asked about that. Thereupon Allah revealed this Quranic verse. So why did you lie to me? I'm going to refute you on this. If you don't, if you let me Why did you lie to me? Yes, this do you this know this verse hadith? says okay, repeat what the verse says. This hadith. This, this, this hadith is about the bed of Autas, the women's we refer- No, it isn't. It's about Ahl al Kitab, you son of a whore. Read it yes, again. About, yeah, about about Autas. Um okay, so even if it's Autas, the woman says I have a husband, the verse says it doesn't matter. Yes. So so, so there was, are you this, okay? Are you okay? The woman says I have a husband, but the ayah says doesn't matter, you take her anyway. Are yeah, you okay? The, 
If your mother was at Altas, yeah. and Muhammad, shut up, let me finish the point, dude, so I can embarrass your prophet. And Muhammad sends Ibn Abbas on your mother. She goes, I'm married. The verse says, so what? She's yours. And then he sleeps with her. Are you okay with that? Okay, so... Are you okay with that? No, but let, let me let me first Wait, explain. Wait, so you're not okay it. with what your dog Muhammad did? Good, good. Okay, okay. No, so no, no. But let me first here, explain. You stupid bastard. Get the hell out of here. There you go. This is what you brought into the Netherlands, Europe. Europe, this is what you brought into the Netherlands. Good job, Europe. This is what you did to yourselves. Okay? This is why I did what I did to him because of what he did to the Bible. You see how they dare misquote the Bible because they think Muhammad, right, is following the Bible and they think the Bible teaches what Muhammad taught, that filthy son of the devil. Okay? And you wonder why Muslims hate us and Muslims don't like us and Muslims want to kill us because we don't put up with this garbage. This is what you brought into Europe. This is what you brought into Europe, Europeans. Did you see what you brought into Europe? Europeans, this is what you brought into Europe. This is what you brought to the Netherlands. That's why you have all these European women getting raped by the Muslims. It's what you brought, right? This is what you're doing, America, when you bring a 70-year-old bastard like him, a bastard like him, who wants to twist the Bible to justify Muhammad, this dog, whore who's in hell to take married women and rape them this is what you did to yourselves it's what you did to yourselves anyway there was good to expose this dog and his prophet who's a dog son of a whore burning in hell pray for us because you know the muslims don't like us pray for us because the muslims hate us and want to stop us and threaten us pray we're filled with the spirit and never back down even unto death and lord protect us and our children hope you're blessed Wake up, Europe. This is what you did to yourselves. You are history. This is what they're doing in the UK. They've taken over. This is what they're doing in Germany. This is what they're doing in Sweden. You destroyed yourselves as God's judgment upon you for turning your back against Jesus, the Bible, and the church. When you did that, God removed his hand, and now he brought Muslims to <clears throat> have them do with you what Allah, their Satan, Commands them to do. So God's hand is removed from Europe. You didn't want Jesus. You didn't want the Bible. You didn't want church, right? So the Lord says, you don't want me? All right, I'm gone. Let me remove my hand of protection. So the Lord handed you over and left you because you didn't want him. And what came in? The Muslims, used by Satan, their God, whom they think is the true God, to rape your women, rape your children, to then behead you, kill you, and bully you. Because you said to Jesus, we don't want you, we don't want your Bible, we don't want your church. And it's going to happen in America. God says, well, you don't want me? Then you don't want my protection. If you don't want me, you can't have my blessing or protection. So I remove my hand. Come on in, Allah. Bring in Muhammad and his dogs so that they can then rape the women, rape children, Abuse and oppress women and murder men. Come on in. Take over. See? You see why I went after him? Because he would dare butcher Numbers 31 to justify what his whore Muhammad, son of a whore, did to women. So I, that's why you effeminate queer baits who think you're Christian, may the Lord crush your mouth and rebuke you and silence you, you filthy, wicked garbage. That you are spineless and you don't have the courage to call out these dogs who would rape your women to protect the church. God, crush your mouths and remove you from the way so that you don't become a hindrance to us who are not scared like you. But anyway, Christ is risen, risen indeed. Lord willing, I'll see you a little later if the Lord wills. I got to go get some rest.